So one of the things that a lot of students kind of get mixed up with, and I can't blame them because they sound really similar, is endothermic, exothermic, endergonic, exergonic. And, and in both of these processes, energy is, is going somewhere. It's either moving in or moving out. And the real difference being what kind of energy here. And so for endo and, or exothermic, we have a change in potential, we have a change in potential energy, right? It can be any kind of a process that we want to, uh, it doesn't really matter, but there's a change in potential energy that takes place here. Okay, so in ender and exergonic, there is a, there's still a change and there's still energy flowing some way, but in this case, it's a change in free energy. What is free energy? Well, free energy is just simply the energy that you can use to get work done. All right, so let's a little illustrate a little bit what, about what this means, and I'll, I'll use a, a real simple example would be the combustion of a hydrocarbon. As an example, we know that oxygen and methane, we'll say that swamp gas, come together to give us CO2 and H2O. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna balance this. Um, and then they also give off heat, right? A lot of heat. Heat is just, you can think of heat as a reactant or a product in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. It behaves very similar to that. So it gives off heat, right? And we all know this, right? You've seen probably at some point swamp gas or some type of a combustion reaction take place. Let's go ahead and just plug this. Potential energy versus, we'll just say time, the reaction process here. Starts off here, bam, there's a bit of a change there. And in that process, we're releasing energy from heat. So our potential energy went from up here being high with these guys to being something down here. With these guys, we've lost uh, potential energy. We've given that off in the form of heat. Yes, good, good, good deal. Okay, how much, and you guys know obviously that you can use the combustion of a hydrocarbon species to do work. So the question is, how much of that energy that's being released can I use to do work? And so the question for that is, well, how do you figure that out? We know that in any process that we use, whatever that process may be, we're going to lose something due to entropy, right? Nothing is 100% one-to-one. -one. We never get 100% yield in chemistry. It doesn't matter how, how great we are, we can never get 100% yield in chemistry. So the way that we can measure that, the, the change in, in Gibbs free energy, is we have to account for the energy that we've got going out here with the amount of energy that we're gonna lose from uh, entropy. So we say this delta E is equal to delta H. That's this, right? I should probably just circle that there. That's that, okay? Minus, and maybe you guys can remember this equation. This is one of the greatest equations ever, T delta S. So you're basically saying that the energy you can use to get work done is equal to the energy of your reaction, the energy that your reaction is giving off, the potential energy, minus however much you're going to lose from the inevitable process of, of really just entropy. The temperature here is just kind of to keep things dimensionally consistent. 